August 2, 2018, Apple became the first publicly traded US company to hit a 1 trillion dollar market cap. Then just after 2 years on August 19, 2020, Apple became the first company to hit a 2 trillion dollar market cap. And then in the next one and a half years, January 3, 2020, Apple only became the first company to hit a 3 trillion dollar market cap. As of today, Apple is sitting with a mind-blowing market cap of 2.3 trillion dollars. and also generated revenue of more than 394 billion dollars in 2022 alone but while on one side apple is hitting all these milestones on the other side it's facing many challenges the biggest challenge for apple is the decline in the sales of its most valuable product iphone second apple is being sued by antitrust cases in the european union and then apple is being criticized by many big companies like spotify meta and twitter due to its policies Now the question is why is the world's most innovative company's iconic product iPhone is not revolutionary now where is all the innovation gone after Steve Jobs and in the world of collaboration how is apple going to sustain after this rivalry with other big corporations many people are comparing apple with nokia is apple really going on the same route and is the downfall of apple started or if tim cook has any plans to handle this crisis in this video we'll talk about the story of apple and iPhone business while answering all these questions and most importantly the future plans of Apple so stick around the story starts in 2007 when the world was tired of using the same keypad and small screen phones by Nokia Motorola and BlackBerry then Steve Jobs announced Apple's revolutionary product iPhone He also announced that Apple is shifting focus from computers to consumer electronics and renamed Apple Computers Incorporation to Apple Incorporation. The world went crazy over iPhone due to its high resolution display and touch screen features and the iPhone became a hit. Apple sold 270k iPhone units within the first 30 hours. Then in the next year 2008, Apple came up with iPhone 3G with additional features for push email and turn by turn navigation. along with the App Store to sell third party applications. Then in 2010, Apple came up with another revolutionary product with the thinnest smartphone in the world at that time and launched iPhone 4, which came with a high resolution retina display and front camera that gave us the selfie revolution and also introduced FaceTime video chat. iPhone 4 got 600k pre-orders within the first 24 hours and Apple sold 1.7 million iPhone 4 models within the first 3 days of availability. And with the launch of iPhone 4, the markets of Nokia, Motorola, and BlackBerry were finished, and these companies were almost shut down. After all these iPhone successes, Apple didn't stop there. And then in 2011, Apple launched iCloud with iPhone 4s, which helped users to sync their emails, contacts, calendars, photos, and files to the cloud, and navigate between Apple devices as well. Then in 2012 iPhone 5 was launched and iPhone broke its own records and received over 2 million pre-orders. The iPhone 5 was thinner and lighter with an aluminum body and had fingerprint and fully functional features of Siri. iPhone 5 was also the first iPhone that was developed under Tim Cook and last to be overseen by Steve Jobs. Then in 2014 came the most successful iPhone with faster processor, upgraded camera and better battery life with larger display. iPhone 6 received more than 4 million pre-orders and as of today more than 224 million iPhone 6 units are sold and it's in the top 3 of the highest selling mobile phones just behind Nokia 1100 and Nokia 1110 but now the question is after all this success of iPhone what happened why are we not seeing any more innovation and major upgrades to the iPhone but before we go further if you have enjoyed the video this far please smash on that like button and subscribe to our channel We are working hard to bring more amazing business stories to you. Thank you. Twenty fifteen was the ceiling for iPhone, and after this, innovation was almost lost with iPhone. All the subsequent iPhones have almost negligible changes on camera, display, and battery. With tech becoming more available, many new phone companies have emerged and came with the same features of fingerprint, face recognition, better camera quality, and battery life. In fact, Android has evolved so much in the last few years with better battery life and many apps available on its Play Store. Google Assistant is also competing with Siri. The recent iPhone 14 hit the record, but on the other side, where Apple has to cut the production due to much less demand from suppliers. 
Although in the last few years the revenue from the iPhone has increased, but it's due to the increased price of the iPhone, despite less sales. In 2015, the highest model of the iPhone was $949, and today it is over $1600. So now Apple knows that it won't be able to raise more prices otherwise it will lose its existing user base. If Apple decreases the prices it either has to compromise with the quality or the profits will decline. So now the question comes what's next? Apple appeared as a top tech company of 2015 in the list of Fortune 500 companies and now after hitting at its top Apple knew that the world was going with technological advancements and they won't be able to compete with one product in their hands. So Apple started capturing new users with its multiple product ranges. In Jan 2017, Tim Cook announced to double its software services revenue by 2020, and Apple changed the focus from a phone company to becoming a tech company with multiple consumer electronic products and software services. Apple software services revenue has grown up from 24.1 billion dollar in 2016 to 78 billion dollar in 2022. And not only in software services, Apple has continuously increased its revenue from MacBook, iPad, AirPod, Apple TV and Apple Pay. In fact, the Apple Watch that was announced in 2015 has captured more than 50% of the market share. And the total revenue of wearable accessories has grown up from 9.8 billion dollar in 2015 to 41.1 billion dollar in 2022. You see Apple has created an ecosystem with its products. If you are using an iPhone, you will use iCloud and App Store and then buy Apple Music and AirPods and then due to better connectivity and sync, you will buy MacBook and then wear Apple Watch to pair it with iPhone. And then due to same connectivity and better sync, you might set up an Apple Home as well and pair it with HomePod and Apple TV and then other smart home accessories like lights, cameras and locks. And then once you enter in this ecosystem, it's hard to break. So now you might ask that Apple has captured and in fact dominated the consumer electronics market especially in US and it will become saturated in the next few years. So is it done now? And nothing new for Apple? Well, a big no. In fact, it's just the beginning of another era for Apple. As Apple is already working on products for the next decade both in consumer electronics and software services. So let's talk about the hardware side first. I'm sure many of you have heard about Apple glasses. that will synchronize with your iPhone and will bring information from your phone's messages, emails, games and maps to your face. These smart glasses will also have adjustments for people with poor eyesight, so you don't need separate glasses with numbers. Apple is also working on its AR VR headsets that will offer body tracking and incorporate real world environments in a virtual space. It might include the on-air virtual keyboard as well. To provide these AR VR features, Apple need more powerful and advanced chips, so it's working on M2 chip as well. To support the hand and body movement with headsets and glasses, Apple is also working on Apple Ring and Apple Pencil. Apart from this, Apple is also working on a foldable iPhone and introducing a HomePod with screen as a mini TV. Apple is also working on Apple Car, which will be a fully featured self-driving EV. So this was from the hardware side. Whereas on the software side, Apple is working on building a new operating system which will be more efficient to support AR, VR and gaming apps. It is also working on building a new app store and new applications for the users of its AR VR headsets and glasses. Apple is also working on iris ID recognition for its AR VR headsets instead of fingerprint and face recognition. If you don't know, iris ID recognition is a much faster automated method of biometric identification that uses the mathematical pattern recognition techniques on the video images of the irises of our eyes. Apart from this, Apple recently launched more advanced end to end encryption for data protection on iCloud in US. and is working on to launch it to the rest of the world. Apple is also working on gaming apps. If you don't know, Apple has the third largest gaming revenue and is behind only from Tencent and Sony. Apple has already beat the big players like Microsoft, Google and Nintendo in gaming. Apart from all these hardware and software solutions, Apple is becoming more and more involved in the US healthcare system. With all the healthcare related data Apple is archiving from its apps over the years, Apple is not only helping users but can also provide healthcare providers the insights about users habits and health related data. This will help to transform the complete healthcare system where healthcare providers can remotely monitor the patients and do the testing with the apps and also provide personalized healthcare solutions. 
Apple is also working on expanding in financial services. It is developing its own payment processing technology, risk assessment for lending, fraud analysis, credit checks, and also additional customer service functions, such as the handling of disputes. Apple is also working on its Buy Now Pay Later feature, which will be integrated with the existing Apple Pay. So after all these points, we can see that though iPhone sales are declining in the past few years, Apple is still building a solid foundation and an entire ecosystem for its user base. It is also working on bringing the new technological revolution in many other domains. So that's about Apple business. Let me know what you think about it in the comments below. If you have enjoyed this video, please do like it. If you are new here, please subscribe to our channel and help us grow. We are trying to bring more amazing business stories to you. If you are subscribing to our channel, please comment as subscribed and I'll reply to all of you. And with that said, I shall catch you in the next one. Thank you and have a nice day.